Hey guys, how are you? This week we are continuing our month of self-love and we're going to talk about mindset and specifically how your mindset impacts that mind-gut connection, what to do with it, and how to improve your health just by doing some mindset work and being mindful of how we treat our brains and our emotions and our mood and how we interpret them. So I know that sounds like a lot, but this is actually, it's not going to be as in-depth and long as you imagine it would, given that. Um, we're going to try and keep this short and sweet and give you a little bit of an overview. A lot of those recommendations in improving your mind and your mind-gut connection are going to take place either next week when we talk about holistic nutrition. And we're going to walk through a step-by-step -step process to help you guys improve. I'm looking at the wrong camera. Sorry. To help you guys improve your, your gut health. Because by improving your gut health, you improve your overall health and wellness. You decrease symptoms and repercussions associated with autoimmune conditions, food sensitivities, and chronic illnesses. So my purpose and my goal in this world is to help you do exactly that. So let's chat. Let's get into this. Um, we talked last week about what gut dysfunction actually is and how it impacts your health. If you have not seen that video, I will be sure afterwards to include a link to it below so you can start with the first step and keep going with us this month. I hope you have put into place some sort of self-love practice for your day-to-day, -day. Um, not just for this month. I know we're focusing on it this month, but you know, for for long term. If you haven't, your homework was to find something that you can do that shows yourself a little bit of love every single day. Today, I'm eating all the leftover berries that um, my toddlers decided to refuse to eat today. A lot of berries, isn't it? Two, two and a half year olds. We are in toddler central here. Send help, please. <laughs> we might need it, especially early mornings. All right, so let's chat about your mindset a little bit, shall we? Very first thing is for those of you that have not watched the gut brain connection video from several months ago or haven't really heard what it is, your gut and your brain are connected by two different connections, okay? Two different things connect our brain straight to our gut, one of which is the vagus nerve. Now, the vagus nerve receives signals, send it, sends it throughout the brain. Um, the other opposite end does the same thing in a convoluted message way. When you look at a diagram, you see brain, you see gut, and you see two connecting points. It's almost like it goes in a, in a cyclical motion. Not 100% of the time, but the majority of the time, yes. One goes from gut to brain, one goes from brain to gut. All right, gut talks to the brain, brain talks to the gut. It may seem weird that your stomach is in charge of your brain, but think about this for a minute. Majority of the things that we absorb, majority, and we're talking 99% of what we absorb, what we consume, absorb through our skin, uh, olfactory system, um, sight. <laughs> Didn't think about that one, did you? All of that goes into our gut for processing. And then it gets shifted around. So if you look at your body like a factory, your brain is the control center, correct? But every control center has a manager. It has somebody in, in the place that says, we're missing this, we're missing that, we need this, we need to do that, take this and send it here, take that and send it there, right? It's got a processing plate, processing center. That is what your gut is, all right? It includes your stomach, it includes your intestines, it includes your liver, um, gallbladder. Everything that makes your stomach work, including that connection into the elimination system, that's what we're talking about when we talk about gut. Now, what does mindset have to do with your gut health or your brain? I mean, does it really even impact you? If you're still doubting me, think about this. Let's set up a scenario that every single person in this world, unless you are mega wealthy and have never had to do this, um, has encountered. You wake up late for work. I mean, we are talking so late. The traffic on the way to work just tripped 
bold in your explanation and you are hoping against hope that nobody else that you work with follows the same path or comes from the same area of town, right? What happens? Can you eat anything? Are you so hyped up that you're not able to even think a happy thought? Now you're frustrated, you're tired because waking up like that, you're not, it's not like you feel like you got a good night's sleep, even when you did. So you're tired, you're anxious, you're stressed, you're worried, and you're not able to put anything in your stomach because all of these things are happening all at the same time, but they're mood and emotion related, correct? Your mood and your emotions may be controlled a little bit by your, your, your brain, but in reality, it all stems from the center of your body. It all stems from that abdominal cavity, all right? And within that abdominal cavity, that stressful situation that every single one of, I mean, how many times, oh my gosh, in my 20s, man, I sucked at waking up on time and getting to work on time. I sucked. I don't know how I kept my job a lot of time. <laughs> and, you know, that's not saying much, but in reality, I really don't because, the stress that I put myself under waking up and getting to work, my God, just the like heart attacks from, oh my God, I got to get to work. I got to do this. I got to do that. And then you run out of the door. A, you don't have caffeine or water or whatever your morning drink is. And B, now you don't have fuel. So now it sets you up for a very angry, moody day because you have not taken care of the number one aspect of mood and emotion and health in your body your gut that's why we're here talking about this today so what i'm specifically talking about is the neurodevelopment and the neurodegenerative effects of having an unhealthy unbalanced gut right what we feed our body fuels our body right what we put on our skin fuels our body the things in our air goes through our olfactory system and goes into our eyes, fuels our body. Ears, what we hear, the sounds, goes into our body. All of these things combine together and create either a positive growth mindset or a negative stagnant mindset. And by using various components, you can uh, you can improve your mindset, which ultimately will improve your gut. It will improve your overall well being. This this philosophy has only like hmm, let me rephrase this. The impact to our health, the dramatic impact and significant impact to our health that our gut has has only recently been discovered. This We're talking within the last 10, 15 years, a lot of studies are coming out. And what, what's happened is science has discovered that we're innately connected all over our body. There are microbes within our body, right? Not just in our intestines, they're in our olfactory system, they're on our skin, they, they live in our body. They help us survive. I saw one study I think through Harvard, but I could be wrong. Um, and what it said was that there are more microbes living in our body, more microbacteria living in our body than there are actual human cells. This is how crucial improving our gut health is. The majority of microbacteria within our body, the, the largest microbiome in our body, is in our gut. And if our gut is not healthy, then nothing in our body is healthy, not even our mindset. And coming out of that grumpy, frustrated mood on a day that you wake up so late feels impossible. Is it impossible? No, but it's going to take a minute. Everything needs to just calm down. It needs to take a moment to breathe. And you're not going to get that moment until you're actually sitting at your desk and going, okay. I made it. Nobody's coming to yell at me. We're good. We're going to move on with our day. Until you get there, you're not breathing. 
You and I both know that, you know, breathing. So when we think about gut health, we have to really think about this because the way you treat your body today impacts how you age. And we're talking about the neurodegenerative and the neurodevelopment impacts, right? Um, when you shift your mindset into growth, it's not just about having a positive attitude. When your mindset is more positive, you're learning better. You're able to absorb better. Your memory functions better. Um, you know, that foggy brain, it dissipates and it disappears. And there's a few things that you want to make sure that you're doing to ensure all of this. If these things don't take place, your cognitive abilities diminish. And over time, those develop into long-term illnesses, things like autoimmune dysfunction, um, chronic illnesses, uh, Parkinson's is associated with degenerative brain function, and poor guts. Um, if you need science facts on that, scientific studies, I will include them below. I will actually try and find a few so that you can, you can do your own research on this. Um, Alzheimer's, dementia, mental illness. While many mental illnesses are genetic, you can improve or diminish their progress. Okay. Simply by putting the right things in your body, by having the right self-love, self-care habits, and really being very mindful. Now, that doesn't mean that every day you have to do this overwhelming I have to check in with myself do, 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 and I have to be strict and stringent 100% of the time. That's not, that is never what I'm talking about. If you've listened to me for a while, you know, that's not my deal. I follow an 80-20 rule. Our body will take care of 20% majority of the times. If you're super harmful, that 20% gets shrunk down quite significantly. All right. So if you're out there parting it up all week and thinking that that's your 20%, no, no. With mindset and with health, it all comes back to your diet. What we feed and what we fuel our body by triggers a healthier mind or an unhealthy mind. By having a healthy mind, you have a healthy gut. You have an unhealthy mind, you have an unhealthy gut. There are a gobs of studies, and actually, what what happened originally and the reason this became such a focus in science as a study is they were discovering that many people who have schizophrenia um, bipolar disorder and other depression clinical depression depression my goodness you guys <sighs> people who had all um mm. <laughs> It is a morning. Uh, people who are suffering from um, not dementia. My goodness, I totally lost my train of thought there. <laughs> All right, so mental illness. People who are suffering from bipolar, from schizophrenia. Specifically, schizophrenia is identified as the very first trigger in producing all of these medical studies. And the reason why is they were noticing that people with schizophrenia, they're connected to more Alzheimer's, more dementia. Um, they have a significant amount of, of gut health issues, things like leaky gut and um, SIBO and IBDD, um, food sensitivities, autoimmune dysfunction that are related to an unhealthy gut for a significant amount of time. That hasn't been resolved. Um, there are specific neurotransmitters within our gut that trigger, you know, production of serotonin and our GABA and our dopamine. When you're fighting schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, um, and anything, anxiety, stress, it's very difficult for your body to produce these things. Well, there's a disconnect between your brain and your gut. Mental illness means that something is not functioning properly. It's not functioning properly, it's the wrong word. It's not functioning in a healthy way. It's not functioning optimally healthy within your brain, which is going to skew functionality all over the body. 
And while you may not be able to control how that actually plays out, what you are able to do is either improve the way that your body is able to respond or just give it what it, just give it basic needs, nothing more. You're just putting stuff in your body and letting it go. When you give your body everything that it needs, it is much easier for the microbiome to digest, to metabolize it, to turn it into the chemicals and the biochemistry that we need to send throughout our body. Ultimately, that is bottom line, you guys. When you feed your body well, you are helping your body to produce everything that we need. The things that get sent around our body to fuel optimal function. To tell cells what to do. When you don't feed your body well, and that includes the things that go into your ears, your eyes, your brain then now you're putting your body into a state that it feels it has to protect itself. Um, and it has to somehow produce what you're not giving it. Now, it was listening to um, Dr. Dr. Hyman's latest podcast, one of his latest podcasts, and he talks about the micronutrients in the world and how it is very difficult right now to take any single test or even take all of them and figure out exactly what you're deficient in. This is where mood and emotion come into play. When, when you are in a healthy state, or at least not, not diagnosed with a mental illness, and if you are diagnosed with a mental illness, but you are in a stable place, you are able to do this. Where what you want to do is you want to be mindful, but you want to use things like daily journaling, um, using gratitude statements every single day so that your focus is on more of the positive, not necessarily the negative. You want to do what I like to call a body scan every single day. And if you're trying to shift your mindset, if you're finding that you're in an unhealthy state and you need to shift your mindset, then a daily body, body scan is actually an excellent idea. Really, all you're doing is taking a minute to check in with the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes to see how you're thinking, how you're feeling, what is going on in your body. Are you able to eat? Do you feel like you've got enough rest? I have all these apps on my phone. One tells me how, how sleep deprived I am. Um, and I, I would like to see how, how well rested I am. But we, the boys had, I think they've hit a, a sleep regression. We've never really had a good solid week where they've slept throughout the night, where both of them have slept throughout the night. Um, one or the other, yes. But both of them, not really. And now what they're dealing with are the, um, the nightmares that happened, which sound very scary for them. Um, but they're waking them up in the middle of the night, sometimes multiple times at night, in the middle of the night. That means we aren't sleeping. <laughs> so that's why I say my sleep app likes to tell me how sleep deprived I am. And, you know, the other day it said, you need a three hour nap to replenish what you lost last night. Even without kids, how many of you just laughed? <laughs> In today's world, taking a three-hour nap is basically not going to happen. It, it's just not. It's almost impossible. So we need to do other things when one thing isn't going to line up. So for me, my sleep is always going to be depleted, at least until these guys get old enough that they sleep through the night which what I hear from a lot of twin moms is about five. So I'm, I'm counting down to five, you guys. Not quickly, because I don't want them to go there quickly, but I'm counting down to five. Um, for you, it could be something different. So here's a couple of tips on how to make sure that you are consistently maintaining a healthier mindset so that your gut and your overall wellness is healthy. First of all, be mindful, use journaling, use your body scan, use gratitude statements, exercise, whatever it takes 
to keep you in a place where you're maintaining that 80-20 rule, okay? 80% of what you do is healthy, 20%. Yeah, you let loose a little bit. You let your body take care of it, all right? The second is going to be diet related. You want to eat whole foods, as many whole foods as possible. And here's why. Your brain and your gut, the microbiome, they don't know what to do with processed foods. They don't know what to do with refined ingredients because it's not natural. They don't detect what nature is telling them to look for, okay? what has been programmed into their cellular structure is just simply not being provided. So they don't know what to look for. So they feel like the body has to give it to them. Now, one other thing to look at is supplementation. Supplementation totally works, but you wanna make sure that you have a bioavailable source. So if what you're eating and consuming from whole foods, it still doesn't, if it doesn't feel like it's enough, to help you maintain a more positive growth mindset, then, and you know, a, a healthier mindset, then look at supplementation. Make sure that the supplements that you're using are bioavailable. They're made with bioavailable ingredients. Otherwise, you really may be absorbing 10, 20%. So you're putting, you're putting stuff in your body that your body has to work to metabolize um, that it may not understand. And on top of that, you're spending the money for said supplements. Some of you, quite a lot of money. And you're only getting 10 to 20% of what you're buying. It just doesn't, it, it doesn't add up to me. Um, and from a health perspective, it really doesn't add up. So be mindful when you're, when you're eating. Be mindful when you're consuming sugar. You want to minimize the amount of sugar that you eat. And I'm talking added sugar, not sugars in foods. Here's why when you eat and consume straight up glucose, which is all sugar is, what you're doing is you're sending it to your liver. It bypasses your stomach. So your stomach doesn't even recognize that you ate anything. It sees it as just glucose molecules. It's already been metabolized. Send it out. Send it to the liver. So the liver will tell it where to go and what to do. So you're missing this whole healthy process within the stomach and the intestines and the gut itself. And as such, your body is now working harder than it needs to, but it's not burning calories. Not, not the way you want it to, at least. So be mindful. Watch your diet. Make sure you're eating whole foods. You're supplementing with bioavailable ingredients. You're minimizing the amount of sugars that you're eating. And you're consuming plant-based fats. Can not forget the fats, you guys. Our brains need fats. They need, brain cells need fats. All right. <clears throat> Very last thing. Ask for help. You can be mindful all you want. You can have what you feel is the best diet on the world. Um, but... Sometimes you need help. And this is where this is where you ask for help. You ask to see if someone can coach you. You ask a friend to be an accountability butter, buddy. So that's a mouthful. Um, you use online groups. If you're not someone that wants to have an accountability buddy, but you're great with Facebook or you're great with any other social media. Join a group, join something that applies to something that you are challenged by on an every single day basis. Ask a licensed practitioner, talk to your doctors. They're there to help you. Talk to a nutritionist like myself or a dietitian, a health coach, a life coach, a business coach. Whatever applies to your life and your situation to help you improve your mindset, to help the health of your brain improve, by improving your gut at the same time, do that. There's no shame in asking for help from a therapist. There's no shame in asking for help from a life coach. 
um, they, they kind of get a bad rep and, you know, there's coaches out there for every single thing that we need. So if there is something that you find you're struggling with that is causing negative thoughts or frustration in your world to the point that you're not able to eat a healthier diet, that you're not able to exercise the way that you should and be active the way that you should, ask for help. Google it, pop it up on Facebook. You know, there's a million people out there doing a million different things. <sighs> All right, so we're going to go over these areas real quick, summarize it. Next week, don't forget, we are going over diet, self love, how to do a step by step improvement in your holistic health through diet. And one of the things that I believe in is biochemical individuality. We're going to talk about that next week. That is specifically related to diet, at least in my in my mind, it is. That's where the core and the start is. So we're going to start with that next week. To summarize today, here are the things you want to pay attention to to improve your mindset so you can improve your gut and your overall health and well-being. Be mindful. Check in on that diet. Whole foods, supplement as needed. Make sure you are avoiding sugar. Get that water in, all that good stuff. And ask for help. There is no shame in asking for help, you guys. I can't say that enough. I hope everybody has a wonderful week. Cheers. I think I, yeah, I got the mama bear. Cheers. <laughs>